Thank you very much, uh, Chair. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Please move on. Uh, I'm here to talk mostly about gasification. Uh, as you know, as you all know, the three thermochemical processes that are used, please keep rolling. Uh, you can give, give two, three seconds and keep moving while I talk. So as the, um, I want to start with the quote, please move, please start. I want to start with this quote about sustainable development, uh, that uh, the de definition that the United Nations came up with uh, after a lot of deliberation, our own uh, father of the nation came up with 100 years back, uh, pretty much the same definition. So the need for uh, waste management, I don't have to speak here, but the three thermochemical processes that we have discussed here are um, pyrolysis, gasification, and incineration, and there was a question about how is it different from gasification. So I may speak two minutes about that. So uh, in pyrolysis, there is uh, no air or very little air, whereas in, ga in, in incineration, we use excess air. That is a fundamental difference, and gasification is something in between, where you use substoichiometric air for converting the uh, waste to syngas. So that is the key difference you were asking that question earlier. So because of, we keep moving. Uh, because we use substoichiometric air, uh, the chances of um, uh, producing dioxins and furans are nil to negligible. Because unless there is some fuel bound, uh, the feed, uh, feed, feed bound oxygen that can create some possibility of creating um, furans or dioxins. Keep moving. So, uh, but other than that, we don't, uh, we use substoichiometric oxygen, therefore there is no uh, possibility of producing uh, furans and dioxin. That is one of the significant advantages of uh, gasification over other processes. Keep moving, please. And I'm not here to say that one technology is better than the other. I feel that all technologies have a, pl a place for pyrolysis, gasification, and incineration. All of them have a place in dealing with waste management. And pyrolysis is extremely good for unsegregated waste. And uh, hydrothermal, hydrothermal liquefaction is a new technology that has come for an unsegregated waste. Gasification can, please move, keep moving. Gasification also, keep moving. Gasification also can deal with unsegregated waste. Incineration, even though uh, people call it uh, uh, a, a bad name, given, given a bad name, I personally don't think that incineration is a bad in any way. Most of the world is still using incineration as a successful process. And there was a study that was made by MNRE, keep moving, uh, that I will show next. Uh, that was shown uh, next. The, I'm sh next, one more. Click. Yeah, there's a study that I'm quoting here by the MNRE, uh, Sri A.K. Dussa. Uh, a few years ago, and he did a study of all the technologies, and he came up with this recommendation that if you are producing electricity, anything more than five megawatts, you should choose gas uh, incineration, and anything less than five megawatts, you should look at alternate processes. So if you convert that into terms of uh, tons per day of waste, that would say that anything above 500 tons per day, you should use gasification, uh, incineration, and anything less than that, you should use gasification or pyrolysis or any appropriate process. The primary reason being that when you install plants, it is not just based on uh, technology alone. There are a lot of other factors that come into the picture, the capital cost, the operating cost, many other factors come into decision making, the risk involved. Uh, for example, uh, if you have a very large plant of 2,000, 3,000 tons per day, then you don't want to have very complicated control systems to control that plant. Anything goes out of control, you have a big problem to handle. Whereas that way, incineration is a very preferred technology because very simple, just burn everything. And uh, therefore, only thing is you need to have good cleanup processes afterwards. Whereas if you have gasification, you need to have very uh, precise process control at various stages of the gasifier to ensure that the gasification process goes without smoothly. So when, a, when the plant becomes larger, uh, but uh, cost-wise, a gasification plant has to be less expensive than an incineration plant because incineration deals with excess air or the volume of gases are higher, equipment sizes are higher, the capital cost has to be higher. Whereas gasification deals with less amount of air, so naturally the cost has to be less. But then, as I said, cost is not the only factor. The control systems are a little more compl complicated. So many factors go into making a decision as to what technology is appropriate, and therefore all technologies are appropriate, in my opinion. Next, please. Next. Next. One more. Keep moving. Next. Next. 
So in gasification, uh, as I said, um, uh, the one thing about gasification is that it has a com portion of the air is uh, incinerated, portion of the waste is incinerated, so, and the heat from the incineration uh, is used for pyrolysis of the remaining part, and then substoichiometric air for partial oxidation. All these three together form the gasification process, and therefore for gasification to be sustainable, what we have found is that we need at least 3,000 kilocalories per kilogram to sustain gasification. Um, which is a tough ask when it comes to municipal solid waste, but then we can blend municipal solid waste with other dry waste to always ensure that the 3,000 kilocalories per kilogram is achievable. And if you talk about efficiency, uh, what we have found is that uh, 60 to 65 percent of the energy that is available in the input waste is what we can collect in the syngas that we produce out of gasification. That's what we call as a cold gas efficiency. 60 to 70 percent is possible. And then uh, what do you do with that energy? Next. Uh, if you do, in my opinion, again, uh, electricity should not be the right way to go because already we have a, a big challenge selling uh, the idea of a waste to energy plan based on economics. And if you go to make produce electricity, then again, we convert only at 30% efficiency. Uh, and if you want to go to 70%, you need to have a cogeneration plant that increases the uh, capital cost. Therefore, the right way, at least for, at this point of time for a country like India, we should be using in the energy as a form of heat at site itself. That should be the right way to go. Next. And um, the other advantage of gasification, as I said, uh, is 20 to 30 percent of the moisture can be used in the process itself. Anything beyond that, we will have to dry. And as I said, if you use it as heat, the part of the heat can be used to dry the, um, dry the uh, in, uh, wet waste. And uh, the other advantage, as I said, substoichiometric air means no dioxins or furans. And, um, the only, uh, all the technologies, all these technologies are actually very mature technologies, at least 50 years old in my opinion, but other technologies have helped improve it. For example, the automated control systems that are possible in uh, today, which was not possible many years ago, makes, uh, helps gasification to be a lot more controlled process than what it used to be. Next, please. So, next. You can skip three slides. So what I'm going to talk about is the experience that uh, I have had over the last 10 years. Please. I show that there are some pictures there. So uh, okay, one more point about incineration gasification is that in incineration, all the fuel bound nitrogen eventually becomes NOx. Whereas in, in gasification, you produce an intermediate product, which is syngas, which has nitrogen in it, but that nitrogen comes from the air that we use for gasification. So the fuel bound nitrogen goes directly as NOx, whereas in gasification, the only the air that we use for combusting syngas ends up as NOx. So that difference is there. And um, uh, in incineration, you produce oxides of uh, SOX is produced. It can be cleaned, whereas in gasification, we don't produce SOX or any uh, chlorides because chloride, chlorine gets reduced to hydrogen chloride, sulfur gets reduced to hydrogen sulfide. So therefore, we don't produce any of the harmful animals in incineration so that we, don't have, we can do less cleanup. Next, please. Next. Next. So please, please keep. So uh, I started this work uh, uh, as a, at a, please skip. Uh, there is a, one point here is that there is a worldwide uh, interest in gasification. Uh, historically, here, incineration has been the technology of choice all over the world, but over the last few uh, years, uh, maybe a decade, there is a significant interest in gasification. I've shown some examples here, which I can tell you about later. Next. And the utilization of syngas. So we, uh, in, in, in our experience, as I said, the best use is to use it as heat, click. But the other options are, when you say, and I say heat, it could be for process heating or for producing chilled water in a vapor absorption air conditioning system, both of which we have demonstrated in a demonstration facility that we are operating. And power generation and fish, fish trough synthesis is always possible as well. Next. The uh, click. The summary of this slide is, as I said before, is that we can get about 60 to 65 percent cold gas efficiency. So with a 3,000 uh, kilocalorie uh, per uh, kilogram feed input, we can get about 800 to 900 or 1,000 kilocalorie per nm cube in the fuel that we produce. Next. Uh, of course, the gas has to be cleaned up. Uh, and the, for cleanup, we use, again, conventionally well-established technologies, keep, keep, keep clicking. Uh, cyclones and squenchers and scrubbers, we don't have to talk much about it. All are very well-established technologies. Next. 
So we started off with a one ton per day uh, gasification uh, facility uh, in uh, Coimbatore. Uh, and then uh, it was a joint project with the State University of New York. And uh, we learned all the technologies there. And uh, from there, we have uh, developed many other plants. I'll show some pictures of that. In all the plants, there are cer certain quantities here are measured quantities. Certain things are calculated quantities. And we find that uh, the, uh, all the emission parameters are less than the CPCB uh, standards for uh, emission controls. And uh, the most significant part is uh, the tar content in, a gas, uh, content in a gasification process is significantly lower than in other processes. Next. Footprint, there's a question that I'm uh, asked always. Next is that, uh, one more. We can put a 100 ton per day plant in uh, less than two acres. Next, please. Next slide. So this is an example of a circular economy in the textile industry. Uh, we installed a plant uh, in we, me, we meaning um, in my, my industry partner where I was a partner in that project, click, that we uh, have a 10 tons per day plant installed in Surat. Those of you who are interested can go and see it. Uh, it's a, uh, the plant is installed in a company where, which makes dye intermediates. So they have a lot of liquid effluents. So the uh, chindi waste, the polyester waste, which is um, uh, gasified and the, we produce steam and that steam is used to for multi effective uh, used in a multi effective operator to uh, to purify the effluent next professor can I just wrap up wrap yeah. up so so these are some uh, research areas uh, uh, that are possible that are what what is next in gasification i feel that uh, co2 gasification and conversion to methanol are the uh, next steps that we could take gasification forward next and also another thing that I have mentioned is about uh, uh, to development of wet electrostatic precipitators because one of the things that we need to do is to cool the syngas if we want to use for internal combustion applications and therefore we need a, uh, some way of removing fine particulates at high temperatures. Next. Next. These are proof of concepts that we got. Last slides. Uh, this is a, an, another plant that, is, uh, that was uh, built, assembled in India and then uh, installed in Hawaii in the Pearl Harbor Air Base. Next. <coughs> Next. Keep on moving, keep on moving. These are all examples of various plants that we have mentioned. I'll just show one picture of the plant that we're installing right now in Karunia. Keep going. Next. Next. Roll it. You can keep on clicking on one picture after the other. This was a modular plant. This is a plant in Surat that I mentioned. Which uses, uh, which gasifies uh, polyester waste. <laughs> anyway, the, the, that was a plant, uh, the current plant that we are doing is in Karunia is under a DST funded project to, to convert two tons of plastic to energy. We are going to produce uh, 400 kg per hour of steam and the steam is going to be used for cooking in the uh, in the college hostel, and or, or also to produce chilled water to uh, air condition one of the buildings. So that is the uh, project that we are on. Those of you who are interested are welcome to come and visit our plant in October when it will be commissioned. And uh, thank you for the opportunity.